I'm Rick Johansson, and this is the Iron Echo Design Channel. Today, we're gonna do an Inkscape tutorial. Specifically, we're gonna make some skyline watercolor wall art. And this idea actually came from a comment on the world map black watercolor video we did. And it's from Stefania who says, amazing video, is it possible to do a cityscape wall art using the same method? So thanks, and um, yes, that's what we'll do today. Here's some examples I did earlier. Here's Paris, and then I did London, but it came out a little too dark, like haunted for this tutorial. So today we're gonna do Dubai, and I'm gonna show you how to actually extract the skyline from a source image, and then how to, act, how to put on the, um, the watercolor effect. So to start, you can choose any city you want. I'm gonna do Dubai, and the, the source image came from Pexels. So it's pexels.com. I typed in skyline, and you get all these choices here. This would be an easy one, but I'll show you how to actually extract any skyline you want. And if you want this exact file, I'll put the, the, the link will be in the description how to get this, this file. And I also wanna give um, credit to the photographer, Alexander Pisarik. Appreciate it. This is perfect for our purposes. It's uh, free to use with the, with the open source license. So we'll do download it, and then I'll just drag it onto the desktop. And back in Inkscape, I can then drag it from the desktop onto the workspace from my import type embed, and then DPI from file, then OK. And in this case, it's under five megabytes, so I'll just bring it in as it, <laughs> where is where's the other Burj Khalifa? There it is. Uh, what I was saying is if you have a large source file, you might want to resize it before you bring it into Inkscape because when Inkscape does pretty much anything, it sometimes crashes. So I wanna manually resize it by holding Shift and Control inside of Inkscape and just bring it down with the same proportions because the next step I need to do to make sure I can get a good silhouette, I have to change the lighting a little bit. So in this case, I have it selected. I'll go up into Filters, Color, Lighting, and then here is some sliders here. Now I have it preset for this image, but when you push Live Preview, it'll probably it'll look like a mess and then just move these sliders until it looks something like this. Doesn't have to be perfect, just so you can actually get the dark that we're gonna extract. Push apply, then close. Now it's time to turn this image from a JPEG into a vector. So there's a tool to do that. So as long as it's selected, go up into path and then do trace bitmap and that'll bring up this menu here. I have a tutorial on trace bitmap if you wanna go through that, but in this case, just make sure on single scan, choose brightness cutoff, and then the default, if you push update, like that's not what we want. We want it to be just the silhouette. So for brightness threshold, 0.20, update, and then this is just like a preview of the render, push okay. That's actually like the science part of it. So I can pull this vector out, and now it's time for the art. So if I zoom in, um, it's okay over here. We're just gonna use this portion here. But for the art part, I'm gonna go with a gradient. And let me show you a basic gradient first. So choose this one here, the square, create rectangles and squares, and just draw a rectangle. If you have a stroke on it, let's say there was already a stroke, just X out of the stroke, make sure you're on fill. And then no matter what color you start with, this thing right here, this is the gradient, linear gradient. So click on that. This lets you control this bar. If you don't see the bar, push this little pencil thing for the edit the gradient. If you click on the square, you can choose what color you want that side to be. So let's say you want it to be purple or blue or something. I wanna be like, like a darker blue here, so we'll try like that. But just for the example, right, right there is good. This is going to, over here, this side, if you click on this, it's showing zero opacity. So it's, it's fading out to nothing. But I don't want it to do that. I want it to fade into a different color. So I'll click on the circle, I'll get the opacity up, and then you can choose a different color. So that's just a basic gradient. I wanted to show you that first, Oh, also you can also change the direction. So in our case, we're gonna have it be dark on the bottom and light on the top. You can kind of, it's, it's pretty cool. That's the basic gradient. But now I need to draw one from scratch because what we're gonna do is this gradient's gonna go here and then it's gonna stamp out the portion we want and become that color. But I don't want it to have a flat bottom because of the watercolor effect. I want it to look like flowing and natural. So let's use the same principles of making a gradient, but we'll draw the shape ourselves. So the um, Bezier tool here, I'm just gonna draw pretty much a rectangle with the jagged bottom. Hold control so I can draw straight lines up, over, down. I'm just making up the jagged bottom just so I can have some variation. And it turned green, that's okay. So I'll take this, I'm gonna lower it so the hierarchy's down to the bottom, about where I want it. Actually, let's make it so I can see through it and put it back on top so I know what I'm gonna take apart, all right? So that's the shape. So all I'm doing is I'm, I'm creating what do I want to take out of this silhouette here? 
and now I can make it the correct gradient that I want to use. So I'm going to go with the blue motif. I'll take the opacity back to full. I go to linear gradient. It's the wrong direction, wrong color, so choose the um, pencil. And this line lets you control it. So I'll put the bottom here, and I'll go to like a dark blue we were hoping for somewhere, right about there, and then I'll move my circle. See how that works? You can really manipulate it. It's pretty cool. I'll have it here in the middle somewhere, and I'll make that like a light blue or like a teal or something. You know, past has to come up. We can modify it further later. Click off of that to show you again what's happening. I'm going to now stamp out the part of the silhouette with this like gradient thing we made. A little more tweaking here. Bring it up. And right there. Let's go with that. Okay, so to actually stamp it out, you need to have the silhouette on top. So click on the silhouette then bring that to the top hierarchy. And then select both of them. So hold shift and then click your gradient. And then go to object, clip, set. <laughs> Let's zoom in and see what we got. All right, so you don't, <laughs> the jagged bottom looks bad now, but don't worry, it's part, part of the effect. That's what we needed. Look at this construction crane in there. If this was for a, a serious project, I'd probably edit out some of these construction cranes. I, I wonder when this was taken here. All right, remember I said we can further modify the gradient? Let's do that here. So I'll go, it's selected already. I'll go back to this pencil thing. And here's my gradient again. Before I drop, look at that. Before I drop the uh, watercolor effect in, I want it to look like uh, some variation of color. So that's kind of nice right there. Let's, uh, let's, tr let's try that. Now Inkscape has some good filters on this. So while it's all selected, I'm gonna go up to filters and then I'll go to texture. Then down here, you can play with these, but the one for today is watercolor. Now I have it preset, so let me, let me do the effect and then I'll show you the preset. So watercolor, <laughs> uh, but it's not done. That's just like to get the actual, uh, the, the request from the comment. How do we get the watercolor effect on a silhouette? But let's just break this down. So you wanna go back to filter, filter editor, Gaussian blur. I have it set to 15, turbulence 0 0.025, type is fractal noise, octaves five, and then C 27. The C just changes like the variables, so you can play you can play with all of these. But if you want it to look like this, then um, I'm just gonna complete the um, the settings. So composite, make sure it's on over. Then color matrix, don't touch any of that. And then displacement map is 45. But watch what happens if you move it around. It's like literally changing your watercolor. So I might go a little darker there. I think it looks good like that. Now there's even more settings you can go through, but those are the basics if you want to get this type of effect. And just to show you that it, you can change it as whatever you please. If I go back to the very first one, the top Gaussian blur, for standard deviation, I thought 15 looks good, but if you go back to lower the deviation, you can see the cutouts we made. But in the end, I think I'll just keep it um, Actually, that looks kind of cool like that. Let's just go forward with this right there. I just noticed we had lost the top of the spire. So off camera, I just drew it in. I literally did Bezier pen, just drew one line up and then a little tiny line at the top. So just little details. All right, so now that we have our watercolor, I want to add kind of like the, the bleeding out waters at the bottom. So there's a lot of different ways you could do it. The, an easy way just to show you the concept is I'm just going to grab a shape. So it's on Pentagon just randomly and then just draw out of Pentagon if you're on fill and stroke, make, make sure you have the stroke off and then fill. I'm gonna make it the color that it's closest to so it blends in. So I'll do eyedropper and I'll choose this blue right there. Opacity is not full, I want full opacity, so right there. And then the same thing, so it's selected, you go to filter, textures, watercolor. And this is where you might wanna play with them more. So on this one, on blur, you see how it's like, there's my pentagon. I'm just dragging the slider on the blur and then when I feel like it looks good, I'll stop. So I think that looks good right there. And you can kind of move it where you need to go, maybe make that smaller. Interestingly enough, watch this. If you go to back to the shape, these, now I can manipulate the actual way the watercolor looks. It lets me, I can just say, oh, I spilt it everywhere. Or you can keep it under control. That's actually way too big. So let's just minimize that a small amount. And I'll show you, you can do it different ways too. You can take your Bezier pen and then draw. Like on this side, maybe I want it to be more faded. Just randomly draw something like that. And I'll change the color. Opacity is full to this lighter color. Opacity went away because it adopted that. So I'll go back to full opacity and then just do the same thing. So go to filter, texture, watercolor. 
That's, I like that a lot. Maybe we can double up that. So since that looks so good, I don't want to mess with it because when you move it, it changes the, the look of the watercolor. I'm going to duplicate it, Control D, and make it darker that way. So we'll change the blur to darker like that. I'm going to, I'm going to through the magic of editing, I'm going to finish up the bottom and then come back and then just add a little bit of a sky there. Okay, and we're back. So all I did is I just added some more. I changed the color here. I tried to make it match the area it was next to. To add a very subtle sky, I'm going to grab the circle and then I'll just make a circle. Let's change the color to like some type of orange yellow. Let's do it over here so we can see what's happening. I'll go to filter textures and then watercolor again let's go even lighter real light like almost like it's um it's a hint of the sun itself i want it to look like the tower so tall like it's above like the cloud or the sun just like reaching up there okay so if you like this horizontal way then you're good to go but i'm going to finish it with the vertical that we had in the example and to do that we first have to select all the different elements here so i'm going to zoom out and then the watercolor effect kind of reaches further than you think. So hold shift way out in no man's land and try to grab everything like that. And then I can tell I've got my clipping box too. So to unclick that, do shift and then click on that. All these different elements are together. Control G will group them. Now I can bring the clipping box in and then we'll do, we'll change the opacity so we can see where we're going. And we'll put it right about there. Looks good. Opacity goes back up. Then this is selected. Hit shift. Select your watercolor. And then to make it stamp out, go to object, clip, set. And there you go. So there's the vertical version. And then let's just slap a virtual frame on it. And we are good to go. So there is Dubai. Inkscape takes us around the world. And uh, thanks a lot for your comments. If there's anything you want to try or if you have questions, just let me know. And uh, yeah, have fun with it. And see ya.